Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Lexi Petrella. I'm the Director of Development here at Clean Fuels Ohio. I'm so excited to see more people uh, joining us today. Um, just some housekeeping. I am muting everyone as we jump on. There will be plenty of time for discussion um, and to hear all of your questions and get those answered later in our workshop. Um, but I'm going to hand it off to Jacob, who's going to just cover Jacob and Tim, excuse me. And our team members are going to go over some um, of the basics with CFI. If you joined us for our first webinar, some of this might be a little repetitive, but we just want to cover the really important stuff uh, before we move into discussion. Um, please continue to use the chat function throughout the workshop so we can make sure we get everyone's questions answered. Um, and we're really excited for all the things to we're go going to present today. So Jacob, I'll hand it off to you and I'll continue to um, admit people and then mute them upon their arrival. Thanks everyone. Great. Thank you, Lexi, uh, for the introduction. Uh, and thank you all of you for joining us for this review of the 2023 CFI funding opportunity uh, and workshop. Um, really thrilled to have all of you here. I think this is a this program is a great opportunity for us here in Ohio um, and really looking forward to figuring out how we can uh, attract as, as much of this funding to Ohio as we can. Um, so Real quickly, uh, hopefully most of you all know us, uh, but we are Clean Fuels Ohio. We are an independent nonprofit working throughout the state. Um, our vision is to support the deployment of cleaner vehicle technologies and fuels uh, to replace um, traditional auto gas and diesel, uh, to support the efficient and affordable mobility, to support cleaner, healthier air for communities throughout Ohio, uh, and develop a more sustainable climate and transportation system today and for generations to come. Um, our mission is to uh, improve air quality and health, reduce environmental pollution, strengthen Ohio's economy, and enhance our nation's energy security. Um, and of course, today's presentation wouldn't be possible um, without the support of our members, um, including CODA and the Ohio Soybean Council and Ohio Propane Gas Association and many more uh, who have joined us as Platinum members. Um, and the Superior Group, American Biogas Council, Shell Recharge, Black and & Veatch, and others who have joined as Gold members. Um, and I figure this is actually a good time to ask if the slides are moving for everybody um, before we go any further. It looks good on okay. my end, and we have some thumbs up. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Um, always have to double check that one. So uh, just quickly to quickly review today's agenda. Um, the first two we've already knocked out, just a welcome and introduction and a quick review about Clean Fuels Ohio. Um, Tim Cho, our wonderful senior manager for federal and special projects, uh, will be doing a quick review of the funding opportunity and going over some of the details like eligibility requirements and cost share uh, structure um, with kind of a focus on some of the questions we received during our last presentation. Um, I know Lexi mentioned this at the top, but this is our second presentation and workshop on the funding opportunity. The first is available up on our YouTube, um, but that means we're really going to be trying to get through uh, the technical aspect of this very quickly, um, aiming for like 10 to 15 minutes, so we can really maximize the time that we have uh, on the back end for breakout groups and free discussion and make sure that we have an opportunity to answer y'all's questions. Um, and so speaking of the breakout groups, we are going to have three of them. Um, you are able to pick your own. Um, you can use either the QR code on the left if you would like to scan that with your phone, uh, or there should be a link coming up in chat shortly. Um, just lets you opt in and pick which one, which group you are interested in uh, joining for about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and then Yes, afterwards, we will be coming back as the whole group for 
just another free discussion and Q&A period. Um, so I can stop now for any questions. I know I've gone through this part really fast. Going once, going twice. Oh. Awesome. Um, well, Tim, you are up next. Take it away. Thanks, Jacob. Um, yeah, well, good afternoon, folks. Hope you're all having a good Wednesday. So real quickly here, um, over the next 10 minutes or so, I will be giving a quick overview of the CFI discretionary grant program and uh, really prioritize uh, over the next 10 minutes uh, what the key hitting points are uh, for the grant program and uh, eligibility requirements and other uh, items that, that you should be aware of uh, since we're just around the corner with applications being due on May 30th. So uh, quick summary of the program, the U.S. Department of Transportation and Federal Highway Administration released the first round of funding for the charging and fueling infrastructure discretionary grant program back in March. So the, the multi-billion dollar program will fund electric vehicle charging and alternative fuel infrastructure in communities across the country, but also along designated highways, interstates, and major roadways. Uh, Clean Cities Coalition, such as ourselves, Cleanfield Ohio, can play a key role in project applications and implementation. And so I uh, just wanted to remind folks that this webinar will be recorded and, and shared uh, with all of you and, and uh, attempted to be posted on our website. So. Uh, for, for those of you that are wondering if materials will be shared, we will plan to share that. Uh, so just diving right in, just wanted to start off with um, some uh, guidance from the, the joint office, but also all the federal agencies that kind of create this uh, interconnected team uh, at the federal level with the goal to uh, reduce uh, transportation uh, greenhouse gas emissions in the U.S., essentially one third of all emissions. And so the way that they've really siloed three key areas for a lot of these funding programs have to do with three pillars, uh, convenience, efficiency, and clean energy and transportation. So uh, a lot of the funding programs that you'll see not just this year, but released next year and in two years and three years from now, will really uh, incorporate a lot of language built around these three pillars and just making sure that building infrastructure, EV charging infrastructure is not just convenient in the way that um, we, we plan it and, and have these uh, different modes of transportation available uh, through land use planning and community design, but also efficient in the way that uh, we can utilize public transportation um, and, and the, existing, the existing infrastructure and even parking um, and the use of car sharing uh, to make sure that the system is, is interconnected. And then lastly, but not least, but for a lot of the folks here that have been around the alternative fuel and clean transportation space, just making sure that uh, whatever fuels we're using is, uh, you know, produced and sourced uh, here in the country and, and that, you know, that we're not just considering one type of fuel, but, but many and various ones to, to make sure that uh, the sources are, are coming from a wide range of, of different uh, sources. And so just wanted to highlight this up front. So going into the next slide, I'll just quickly cover the uh, details of the program again as a refresher. And so as I, as I kind of mentioned earlier, this is the Charging and Fueling Infrastructure Discretionary Grant Program with essentially two uh, key components of the program, the Community Grant Program and the Corridor Grant Program. Just from having a lot of conversations with our members and stakeholders and end users in Ohio, it looks like there is a, heavy, a more heavier, a heavier interest in the Community Grant Program as opposed to the Corridor. Uh, I have been talking with some folks at uh, the National Lab in, in a way that we can partner um, with so some agencies and other Clean Cities coalitions uh, for some corridor projects, but uh, just from my interpretation and, and understanding and, and uh, the relevance of, of what's been kind of uh, been, been in these phone calls and meetings I've been in, the community grant program seems, seems to be of much higher interest, but uh, the DOT will prioritize both and, and even um, prioritize one specific application to a, a different kind of category than the other if they uh, so need to. And, and feel uh, the, the, the benefit uh, in, in switching that program or the, the application for that program. So next slide, real quick, the community grant program, as we all know, uh, there's gonna be a minimum award of 500,000 for 
an awarded application and a maximum award of 15 million, overall 350 million available in this fiscal year with applications due May 30th. Uh, the quarter grant programs, the minimum award will be 1 million. Uh, there is no maximum award side, but 350 um, cap for uh, total funding for all projects this fiscal year, totaling 700 million. Uh, next slide. So uh, we, we had a lot of questions on the first webinar uh, about cost share and what entities can do to cite that, both under the community grant program, but also the corridor grant program. There is language built in into the NOFO, um, and we've even submitted questions to the CFI uh, team uh, at the DOT on you know, what are the specific requirements of a cost share citing, and uh, they do reference, um, as you see here, in the text in green, a specific section um, in uh, so, some of the uh, FHWA's guidance on non-federal matching requirements. So we'll dive more into that uh, during the Q&A, and we do have responses ready to, to share just based off of the questions we gathered from the first webinar. But essentially, uh, the, the key takeaway for cost share is that uh, the federal share shall not exceed 80% of the total project cost. So if the project team is requesting for 10 million uh, in their, in their, you know, from the federal government. Uh, it just ensures that what uh, the the cost share that the project team has to fight for has to be at least 20% of that 10 million, if, if that's the amount you're going for. So in that case, it'd be, um, I think it'd be 2 million and then 10 million uh, with uh, the federal request that the project is is asking for. And so that 2 million will essentially have to come from if it's a community program, not just. Uh, the charging and fueling infrastructure provider and these companies that they've cited as these private entities that could take a huge chunk of that. But, you know, that can come from someone like a Cleanfield Ohio where uh, we are able to cite non-federal cost share um, if the eligible applicant is a city or a, municip a municipality or an MPO, a metro planning organization, um, or other some kind of eligible applicant. Um, there are ways that uh, these entities can also provide cost share. And so that'll be a really interesting uh, point of, of discussion and, and collaboration in, in finding ways to cite cost share uh, to make sure that each application meets that 20% goal. So uh, we'll go more into this during the Q&A as I wrap up these review slides, but um, just wanted to prioritize that as uh, a talking point uh, today as well. So next slide, please. So again, I'm sure all of you know if you're eligible or not, but just going through this list here and, and a visual to help folks understand, again, who is eligible to apply. So uh, if you are a charging station company uh, provider, vendor, uh, charge point operator, or uh, a natural gas fueling operator or provider or supplier, um, a propane, hydrogen even, and fall under this category of, of selling uh, certain um, planning services and, and infrastructure, uh, and installation services to provide fueling for these kind of projects, you will not be considered an eligible applicant. And so uh, we had a lot of those questions come up um, on our first webinar. So just wanted to address that clearly here. You are not an eligible applicant, so you will not be able to submit on the grants.gov website as the prime applicant for the project. So if you are you know, looking and, and serious about applying for a project and, and finding a project team, you will need to work with um, someone in your in your jurisdiction or your region or wherever you're trying to deploy uh, fueling infrastructure, um, you know, with a state or political subdivision of a state like a DOT, um, but also an MPO, uh, a tribe, if that fits um, the need and, and what you're going for. I don't think there are any Indian Native Amer American uh, tribes that are federally recognized uh, in Ohio, but that does apply to a region outside of Ohio. Uh, that, that will be uh, someone who's considered eligible. And so I just wanted to go through that again, but at the same time, as mentioned in our first program uh, workshop, uh, Clean Fields Ohio, um, as a Clean Cities Coalition, uh, we are built of members in our coalition that fit both the eligible applicant side, the public sector, but also the private sector side. So um, we'll do our best to kind of identify where the needs are. And if, if there's someone out there that's looking to apply and, and has an identified um, a provider in terms of the fueling and the charging infrastructure, uh, we can help facilitate those relationships and build those partnerships, um, you know, where, where there's value and, and where we can help in, in a need and, and where it fits. Um, and then vice versa, if you're uh, a charging 
a station operator, provider, or company, or any of the other alternative fuels, and you're looking for someone to partner with, you know, we can we can also help facilitate those relationships as well. And we, we kind of have a, a short list here of who would be interested in applying at this point, who's already applying, and who's already started on application. So I just wanted to, to make that clear, clear in this slide again. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and the, this slide will really just go over some of the eligible project costs if you're looking to apply for the community program. Again, uh, this ranges between 500,000 to 15 million for an award uh, size. So this community program will uh, focus uh, specifically on the acquisition and installation of inf infrastructure. Again, EV charging, propane, natural gas, or hydrogen. Um, so that includes the construction or reconstruction of any real property, but also the planning, fe feasibility analysis, uh, preliminary engineering and, and other installation activities uh, as as you all would be familiar with if, if you've done projects uh, in terms of uh, installing infrastructure uh, with communities or cities or for fleets. So a uh, key thing here is that this must be publicly accessible. Um, so uh, if, if you're an EV charging company and, and have had work with, uh, you know, parking lots, uh, you know, uh, multi-unit dwelling operators or cities that offer free public charging, this one is right up your alley. And then same thing for natural gas. Um, now, you know, it might be a little bit harder since natural gas, propane, and hydrogen would fall more under the fleet category, but um, there still might be a way to address um, if, if that's public or not. So well, that's something we'll dive into in our breakout sessions as well. Uh, next slide, please, Jacob. Uh, corridor program. So again, um, this one is a little similar, but does have a little um, bit of, of differences. Uh, this also must be publicly accessible charging and fueling directly related to the charging or fueling of a vehicle. Um, this uh, specific program for the corridors it must, uh, it does state that each project must uh, deploy charging that's located no greater than one mile from interstate exit or highway intersection. And if it's for any of the other alternative fuels like natural gas, propane, or hydrogen, no greater than five miles from the interstate exit. And again, here, eligible project costs, similar to the first one, but a little bit different. Uh, whoever you're working with, uh, the private entity, or if you are a private entity, you must commit to having uh, the first five years of the project uh, serving as assistance uh, for operations and, and can't really just view it as, hey, we're going to drop some char charging infrastructure here on this corridor on like I-80 here in Ohio uh, in the north part of the state and then bounce. You know, they, they're really prioritizing that whoever you're working with does get uh, that, uh, you know, service built from the first year up until the, the fifth year to ensure that uh, anything, you know, with maintenance or uh, just anything else that, that comes uh, with with any rising issues down the road uh, with, with regards to the fueling and, and usage are addressed directly with uh, the private entity. And so uh, this one's a little bit more complex, but I think we can also dive, dive into this in this workshop. Um, I do have some language from the NOFO that, that I have ready to cite um, regarding the corridor program as well. So uh, that covers uh, the corridor program. So next slide, please. And then requirements and criteria. Uh, the DOT is really uh, asking each application to uh, not just address uh, what they're trying to install for the community or corridor program uh, through a grant narrative, which will most likely be made up of, you know, 10 to 15 pages of, of, of what the project is looking uh, to do and a description of you know, who the partners are, but also a specific information on the budget. And like I said earlier, um, if you're requesting 10 million out of that maximum 15 million, you know, there should be some sort of budget page or a budget just justification spreadsheet included or incorporated into uh, your application. And then for merit criteria as well, um, as you see listed here, there's five different merit criteria, but the DOT is prioritizing criteria three, four, and five. So um, this is where Clean Fields Ohio can really um, step up and, and offer some value in terms of how projects in Ohio can address equity, community engagement, um, and just 40 themes, as well as other topics such as workforce development, wealth creation, and job quality as well. And then there's also a final piece uh, for each application regarding project readiness and environmental risk that we can plan to go through in our breakout sessions as well, if that's still a question. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, again, uh, just wanted to remind you folks, uh, 
applications will need to use uh, at least some of these tools here that the DOT has provided. Uh, if if you're looking for uh, if you're looking to submit a quarter program application, they are offering the alternative fuel lifecycle environmental and economic transportation tool. Uh, the acronym is AFLEET, developed by Argo National Lab, and so that'll essentially show um, some of the emissions uh, benefits for uh, your project. Uh, it'll it'll cite you know if you plan to deploy uh, this many number of uh, charging stations or natural gas stations uh, in this specific region of the country uh, with you know an estimated you know number of these kind of vehicles using and, and fueling at these uh, you know infrastructure sites then it'll generate some sort of emissions data uh, that'll be helpful to include in your application as well. And then the equity tool as well, uh, we do have the DOT census tracts tool, and then the Justice 40 map, that'll be helpful for criteria number three and four um, to make sure that equity is addressed for each application. And so uh, just wanted to give um, some recognition to the Ohio Department of Transportation as well. They are also a, good, a great resource for folks that are needing assistance and extra resources on uh, deploying different uh, charging uh, station projects as well as other charging and fueling infrastructure uh, uh, fuel types as well. And they do have some kind of uh, grant process guide in their website that, that will be helpful. So just know that Clean Fields Ohio and ODOT uh, can be viewed as these key resources in the state of Ohio um, if you're looking to start an application here in the state. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so that, that's pretty much uh, a quick review of uh, the CFI program and obviously not to uh, the detailed extent that we went into last time, but um, I will spend some time here to go over uh, some of the questions that uh, we had uh, received from the first workshop. And so uh, what we can do now is uh, just go over some of those questions. Um, I am gonna pull up uh, the Q&A sheet real quickly so we can go over the questions. Uh, just bear with me for a couple of seconds as I pull this up. And actually, while he does that, uh, I would like to mention, so on the last slide, um, ODOT, we mentioned that ODOT has kind of an open offer to provide letters of support for transportation projects under this uh, funding opportunity. Um, and I just want to mention that we are, you know, happy to do the same. If if there is a way that we can help support your projects, uh, including, but certainly not limited to writing a letter of support, um, let us know. We are happy to help out. Uh, Juana from ODOT was in uh, my group, and we actually had a really great chat about letters of support. Um, and she mentioned that ODOT cannot directly provide a letter of support, but they do have a link where you can request one. They do require 14 days for turnaround time, um, and I will be sharing out that link. Um, and I can also put it in the chat if you all are interested. If you do need more help with getting letters of support from other agencies, please reach out to us and we will be happy to help you. Sorry, Tim. Now you can take over. Yeah, no, no worries at all, Lexi. Um, so we do have 10 minutes left and we can use this time to take final questions. Um, something that was brought up in my breakout group uh, was a question regarding, um, you know, specific uh, budget allocations of different partners. And um, I think that's a great question because if you're an applicant and if you're uh, going to be priming an application, it's good to know what's a reasonable uh, allocation or, or, you know, specifically percentage distribution of where uh, the grant funding is going to go for each uh, partner on the project. Because for what really makes a strong application is uh, a list of strong partners. So uh, the applicant itself, uh, the charging or fueling infrastructure provider, and the specific installation costs and, and services and, and planning and feasibility studies built into that, but also bringing on partners such as Clean Fields Ohio who can provide technical assistance, uh, grant writing, um, and other things as well, just based off of our experience. And then lastly, uh, a couple of other partners that would be um, suitable to bring into the mix. So uh, as I mentioned in my group, uh, community-centered partners would be great to include. And so uh, an example of you know what a typical breakdown could look like, let's say you're applying for 10 million and you want to figure out, hey, okay, out of this 10 million, how can I break this down? 
um, to make sure that, you know, if, if I'm trying to bring on a partner for this project, that they have some kind of, um, you know, way of getting compensated um, um, through these grant funds. And so um, that, that can really look different. I don't, I don't think there's a specific uh, way of having a perfect, perfect formula, but uh, just to give you an example of something that we have submitted for a DOE FOA uh, back in September, um, the project that we had applied for was a multi-unit uh, dwelling EV charging project. And that specific program uh, was not going to fund the actual technology itself, but specifically for the planning services and the uh, feasibility analysis and work with the community partners, with the property owners, uh, the multi-unit dwellers, uh, the, the tenants, uh, also known as the tenants. And so uh, since Cleanfields Ohio was an, el an eligible applicant and we were the prime for that, we, so the guidelines were that the eligible applicant uh, could take up at maximum 40% of the cost uh, for the budget. Um, let's say, so we were gonna apply for 10 million. Um, uh, we were gonna take 40% of that, uh, but that could range anywhere from how comfortable you feel like you're gonna need to do the work and how much uh, staff capacity you're gonna need to hire if you get, if you get awarded for that. And so uh, just, just considering all those things as well. And then uh, just breaking down the remaining 60, uh, we had brought on five additional partners and kind of, uh, distributed it uh, in, in a balanced way, but we had an EV planning company and a, a small utility take up uh, higher percentages um, of the remaining budget. And then we had listed a couple of municipalities and uh, nonprofit organizations and additional community-based partners that would take up the remaining like 20 to 20, 20 to 30%. And so um, if you're looking for, you know, an example of, you know, what that could look like, um, that's the resource we're happy to share um, uh, to kind of give you a ballpark guidance as well of what a, a breakdown would look like for a project budget. So um, just wanted to address that uh, with the time we have remaining. So Dane, I think that was Dane's question. So Dane, if, if you'd like more info, happy to, to follow up with you online. Any other questions that folks want to post on the chat here? Um, we do have around six minutes left. I'm double checking our agenda to make sure that uh, I'm not overrunning every, anything that Lexi or, or Jacob would have to present. But um, yeah, it doesn't seem like we're getting any any feedback, so. Um, sure. Um, yeah, and we can actually run a few minutes over. Uh, I think we had a little bit of technical issues as we transitioned into the breakout groups. So we can run until about one or uh, 2.05. Um, and I guess just real quickly, uh, so in the partnerships and engagement breakout group, um, question came up on kind of how how CFO, if CFO can be a resource in connecting interested public groups with private vendors, and the answer is absolutely yes. Um, so we are a Department of Energy Clean Cities Coalition as kind of that, as part of the mission of that program, um, we, you know, are definitely willing and able to act as a matchmaker um, and help connect kind of the eligible applicants for this program with the private vendors and manufacturers um, who can provide the most fitting solutions for what the applicants are looking for. <laughs> 